My 29 male, wife says she 29 female, wants a divorce. We've been together for over 8 years. We've been dating for 4 years and were married in October. She claims she is unhappy and does not want to have children. She doesn't want a family, despite what she's been telling me for years. She wasn't into it when we first began dating, but as we got older, she would frequently remark about how thrilled she was to establish a family with me. She claims that my family, particularly my father, has never really cared for her. She isn't entirely incorrect in this. My father is a little old school in a bit, and the fact that she wears sleeves has irritated him for a long time. But we've been together for so long that time has a way of changing these things. They get along well today and have never had any major disagreements. His attitude shifted when we chose to marry, and it became evident that we would be together for the long term. She claims she has pushed me to alter who I am in order for me to be with her. It's difficult for me to put into words precisely what she means. We both evolved so much in the last decade, and 22-29 is a whole different existence. Of course, we both changed. It's what I call maturing. I can only think of little details, and she is quite controlling in the kitchen, so I don't cook as much as I used to. She only does it because she's a tidy freak, and I evidently don't satisfy her standards, haha. Similarly, I was born in the country and was often barefoot in and out of the home all the time, but she likes everything in the house to be just so. I guess you could say I have a bit of a hippie soul and she doesn't. I used to dislike that, but now I enjoy having our tidy house, and it's no difficulty for me to appreciate that for her sense. Even though we have different home standards, I can respect the work she puts in to keep things that way. She claims she has me whipped into shape, but that is not how I want to live. She claims that because of who she is, she dulls my radiance. It's really difficult to hear that. She is presently jobless. She quit her work during the epidemic in order to supplement her income. She has applied to a lot of various places now that that is finished, but she refuses to go back to her former work and rather to collect unemployment until she finds something she enjoys. That one is a little tricky for me. She has earned more than I have for months doing nothing, and although I understood and even supported it at first, the fact that she was unwilling to hustle and even work part-time while searching for jobs irritated me. Missouri is now open with limited limitations, and I have not missed a single day of work throughout this outbreak. I told her as much, and also informed her what I expected of her as my wife. I expected her to work at least until we had children, and seeing her so unconcerned about it disappointed me. She has never contributed to a savings account. We have separate checking accounts as well as a joint savings account. She has nearly never added to it, and despite earning more more than me and being off work for many months, she has not contributed to our savings. She has paid off a few thousand dollar bill, which is fantastic, but given how much she makes, she has basically squandered the money. I just wasn't expecting it. I got home from work, had a shower, and she summoned me into my room, saying she wasn't pleased and that she wanted it to stop. She said that she was no longer physically longing for me, despite the fact that she loved me. Obviously, this one did a number on my self-esteem. I work out on a daily basis, and although I'm not the fittest I've ever been, I used to be overweight, and I've prioritized my health and bodily fitness over the past decade. I assume the gap was created by my playing too many video games. We get out and watch movies or binge-watch series, but we also respect each other's space throughout the week, and after a hard day of work and training, I've certainly slumped down at my computer to game with pals more times than I probably should have. She claims that geeky things like that don't bother her at all, and it's the stuff I like, so I shouldn't feel obligated to adjust anything for her. She claims it's more complicated than that. I adored her and was overjoyed with our life together. Knowing she wasn't as heartbreaking, I feel responsible for her happiness and as if I've let her down by not doing my bit to emotionally connect. But we often make jokes and laugh. We are true buddies. We were planned a vacation together soon and had an appointment with our bank this week to discuss first-time home buyer financing. I also believe it might have been a spark. She claims she wants a family and a country home, and even though she said she did, now that we are making those steps, she is having cold feet and says she doesn't. I'm not sure what counsel to provide since I've never been in this situation before. It seems quite genuine, and she appears to be really determined. My self-esteem has been shattered, and I feel as though I have failed my marriage. I've always tried to put her first and to adore her. Our life was frequent and excellent despite the fact that it was completely unexpected. She appeared to care about us. Story 2 Caught my wife, 24 female, of two years about to cheat with my 30 male, best friend, 30 male. 
to keep this as brief as possible, I'll start with some background information. I met my wife, who we'll name Jess, around 6-7 years ago. We were just pals until we both got out of pretty awful relationships. We were there for one another and everything. We became closer and finally began dating. We dated for a little more than a year. Then she became pregnant. We had a son and chose to marry soon after. Everything was going swimmingly. I know we're both to blame. After we'd been together for a time, I started having trust difficulties. She told me about her background and the two men she had cheated on. I had entirely trusted her up until that point, which scared me, but I tried not to let it alter anything. Jess has a history of melancholy, anxiety, and agoraphobia, in addition to being raped by her uncle. These were the things I was assisting her with while she was visiting a therapist. My family has a long history of depression, which contributes to my portion of the fallout from all of this. Never knew any of this until just a couple nights ago. I had no idea things were becoming worse with me since everyone blamed my personality changes on the fact that I work two jobs six days a week. My wife only works on weekends and maybe for a few hours during the week. I'm now looking for assistance coping with it and putting her history behind her. Tim, my friend, is the next to arrive. Even before we met, Tim made many attempts to separate Jess from her boyfriend, who was at the time living with her. Jesse put an end to it by blocking him on all social media platforms and banning him from calling or texting her. None of this was revealed to me until after Jess and I had begun dating, which was disappointing. On the rare occasion when we got together for a BBQ, sir, Tim was distant and disregarded her. As soon as we informed him that Jess was expecting, his only response could be, I need a coat hanger. He then began to blabber on about Jess to everyone who would listen. We had a falling out and were unable to communicate for around two years. During the holidays last year, he sent us both apology cards and we sat down and spoke about it all. Tim has a history of meddling with other people's personal lives and interpersonal connections. This has occurred at least twice in the last several weeks. It was my pleasure to notify Jess that I've known Tim since I was six years old and that he isn't over your relationship. Over the next three to four months, my workload will drastically increase. Due to the fact that this took time away from me and my wife, Tim took advantage of the opportunity to speak with Jess more extensively. Initially, I was having issues with it since she would be at work until 12 o'clock at night, conversing with him and texting him incessantly during the day while ignoring our kid. After looking at her phone bill and seeing that she had texted him 1,500 times in four days, I cautioned her that things needed to change. They never followed through on their promises. No matter where we traveled, she was continually sending him messages. My thoughts that this was more than a nice talk became stronger until yesterday evening when they walked out together for driving lessons with my wife, which would only last a couple of hours, confirmed my doubts. They left around 2 p.m., and by 10 p.m., I was beginning to have doubts. I used the Find My iPhone application on my iPhone to figure out where they had parked the car. This is a well-known spot for up with other people. As a result, I decided to check into it more. When he unlocked the rear door of his car, he found them both naked in the back seat. Fortunately, I had arrived just in time to avoid anything worse from occurring. I'm enraged the police are called, and I tell Tim to stay away from us and never to contact any of us again, which he does. When we arrive home, my wife is in a complete state of chaos, and I'm at a loss for what to do. I told her that we would seek marriage counseling and that each of us would see a therapist separately. This ended up taking a lot longer than I had anticipated, but it was necessary for me to vent. I believe that what I'm seeking for right now is an outsider's perspective on the situation. I still like my wife, but is it really worth it to try to fix this?